I was always quite into having my own style, I guess. I didn't actually particularly like sewing, but I liked what you could do with it. I always had something quite different and new, and I sort of liked that. It just became very much what I did, and so I went into fashion. When I was, yeah, 15, I used to go and buy fabric in the daytime with my pocket money and then make something in the afternoon and then wear it out in the evening. I was always very really observant about how people looked, what they wore, how they expressed themselves. Hence, you know, I became a new romantic. There was Steve Strange and Boy George and Spando Ballet. You know, we were the Blitz kids. It was quite influential at the time. And we all went on to do something quite creative with their lives. It was a great time to be a fashion student. I just slowly became aware through costume houses. There was a whole side of design that I didn't really know about. I did realise I love the narrative. I like the fact that you use costumes to tell a story and to create character. And the more I did it, the more I realised that's something that I really, really enjoyed. You know the story, you know what they're doing, you know what their relationships are. You need to show that somehow in cloth. In a period piece, you can look at reference. What did they wear in Holland in blood? You know, you have the evidence and then you can play within that. Game of Thrones is much harder in a way because you have to make it up. I just look all the time. Even if I'm not working on something, I'll make scrapbooks. When I see an image, I'll just stick it in like a Circe file or whatever, and I'll just keep putting things in it. It just might be a texture. So when it comes around to starting a game, I'll have a little sort of file of ideas which just might influence the way it goes. And it often happens, I go, God, I forgot about that. That would be quite an interesting way. But also what you've done before sort of informs you where you need to go. designing a series like this. First, it has to come from the script that guides you. Then you start building up a picture of how this person lives and what influences them. And so if they're on the coast, they can trade and they can buy and they can become much more flamboyant. There's competition because there's more than one armorer or more than one dressmaker. It's Winterfell. What do people do in the evenings? Well, they probably embroider. You have to balance that with the other characters around them and consider the set, colors, and it just evolves. I enjoyed doing the four women very much. Arya and Danny and Sansa and Cersei, because they've just really become very strong. I like the initial designing and planning and coming up with the sort of ideas for the characters, working as a team to make that happen. When you finish a film or a TV series or something, that's it, that's your body of work. You feel like you've really contributed something. What we wanted to do was create a place that we hadn't seen before so that when people turned on the TV and started watching the show, they were transported to somewhere else. You can't actually pinpoint a time or a place for any of these worlds. They're elements that are recognizable, they're characters that are recognizable, but they all come together in a truly fascinating and unique manner. We were just trying to create a world that is incredibly gritty and real, that you completely believe it, but you don't actually know quite where it was. It's a place, like all places, that shape the people who live there. When I first started, sort of decided to just research across the board. We just sort of immersed ourselves in museums and books and paintings and sort of Persian and Inuit and Mongol, Japanese, everything. It's really trying to take all these different cultural influences and use them to combine something fresh and something different than we've seen before. Is this your first time in the North, Your Grace? Yes. Lovely country. The North became actually the most English medieval look. It's much blacker and darker. It's a cold place. It's a place where it's probably too cold for farming. It's very beautiful, harsh, rugged terrain like the northern parts of Scotland. Nightwatch, when we join it, is in decline and has been for some time. Everything that they wear there would be mostly padding, fur, not really metal armor because obviously you can't wear that in, in the cold, it, it's impractical. But it's not a uniform because they're not funded enough to do that anymore. But as long as it's black, it's enough for them to wear. My costumes don't really change that much because essentially the Night's Watch wear what they arrive in but anything that they arrive in is dyed black. 
and they sort of live, eat, sleep in the same costume. So it just has to almost smell. His little sister hadn't eaten in three days. He was given a choice, his right hand or the wall. Pip always looks cold. He's got very thin clothing. He wasn't planning on coming to the wall. Wealthier people will bring clothes with them that are probably more suitable. The others actually often arrive in a thin jacket. That's all they have. Jon Snow is planning, is really excited about it and has dressed, you know, as warm as because he has an understanding of where he's going. My costumes, they're brilliantly made and brilliantly designed and, they make, and especially the cloaks make you feel very weighty and powerful. In Winterfell, Starks are very blues and greys and browns, quite murky colours. I wanted warm blues because there's a warmth within their family relationship. Hey, 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 hey. Ned Stark, there's an elegance to him, but he's incredibly practical. I don't want him to look like he ever thinks about what he's wearing. What he wears, you know, says something about who he is, so he's not prepared to be flouncing about like the others in gowns and silks and stuff like that. Happy again, similar sort of um, tones and very underplayed, quite simple clothing. Caitlin doesn't think particularly about what she wears. She wears what she's always worn. It's a traditional way, and that's her look. I'm supposed to marry Prince Joffrey. I love him, and I'm meant to be his queen and have his babies. Seven hells. The two girls, well, they start off sort of here. It was quite nice putting them initially in very similar costumes. You had these sort of tied, knotted tops. Um, and of course, Sansa's are all knotted quite nicely with little embroidered bits on the end and all very nice. And Arya's are just all messy and unknotted and pulled apart and she takes the sleeves off. Arya! What are you doing here? Go away! It's quite nice to have the two of them very similar and to sort of split apart so far away from each other. If you go south, obviously, looking across to King's Landing, they're near the sea, they can trade, they have silks, they have colours. We've decided, really, through the buildings, through the architecture, and through the climate, to make it much more Persian, I guess, in feel. King Robert, although he's living in King's Landing, I wanted to make it that actually at least he and Ned weren't so far apart. He'd rather be in the boiled leather armour, getting his hands dirty with the, with the guys. That's where he's most comfortable. So though he's slightly grander and, and you know the fabrics are slightly better but again it's not going to be lots of sort of pomp and ceremony about him. I don't think that's what he's about. He's a soldier that's become a king. You know he's a drunk. He's a, you know, quite a pathetic figure really. Let's go watch him ride. At least I can smell someone else's blood. Robert. What? Oh. <laughs> An inspiring sight. He's the antipathy of what Cersei wants. I've been sitting here for days! Start the damn joust before I piss myself. Cersei is more about fashion and styling. She tends to wear very soft wrapped silks which are embroidered. It's like a kimono style but with a slightly medieval cut. And she has a lot of metal belts because I quite like the idea that she's arm armoured in a sense. You worry too much. And you never worry about anything. Well, Lannisters, Lannisters don't act like fools. Jamie Lannister, underneath his Kingsguard armour, he always wears a leather okay. coat which is asymmetric. And then we have the, the scaled armour on top. That's the thing about armour like this. To imagine that people would actually fight in this is, is beyond me. I mean, it's, it's not that comfortable, to, but it looks fantastic. And then when we go across the sea, it becomes even hotter. And again, give it a different silhouette, a different colour. Dothraki, of course, are very tribal. Because it is a fantasy, and we, but we want it rooted in reality, it was trying to glean different looks from different races and to create a new look. So it isn't American Indian, it isn't sort of African native. Carl Drogo, he's very practical, leather trousers. Very basic, very simple, lots of lacing on. He lives in these leather pants and they're uh... They're, they're fantastic, I love them. Viserys, there's a sort of link to King's Landing. I mean, he remembers, he's older, he remembers the styles that were worn then. The cut is actually quite similar. Very sort of clean lined with very much a dragon emblem and ready to go back and claim his throne. Daenerys starts as this very innocent, beautiful young girl. And I just wanted a real elegance of cut and a simplicity. It's certainly not medieval, it's almost slightly Grecian, but it's her own particular style. I think it's from once she takes the initiative with Drogo, she then becomes Dothraki. 
And by the time we finish with her, she's a warrior, really. It's incredible. It's just you have those you have those times where you're like, no acting required. This is I'm just I'm just living this moment. The whole idea of this, I think from the from the start, was not to make it like a costume drama. It's like it's not velvet dresses and pretty things all the time. When you watch it, you can really believe you could be there. These are real people with furbles and and they sweat and they they love obviously and they it's all it's it's not doctored and it's not sanitized.